This is a severe weather alert from WWL Weather, sponsored by Egan Insurance Agency. Well, good Sunday evening, everyone. It is just about 420 Central Time here in New Orleans. I'm meteorologist Alexa Trishler with WWL Louisiana to bring you the latest on the tropics. Our first weekend of November, we're talking about a tropical system that has developed in the Caribbean. It's potential tropical cyclone 18. We've been watching this area for days now, and it looks like it has gotten itself together enough to be categorized as a PTC potential tropical cyclone. That's from the National Hurricane Center. They have been investigating this today and have found some closed circulation. Now, it doesn't look all too impressive on satellite, but the closed circulation is there, according to the uh, National Hurricane Center, after flying a plane into it. Hurricane Hunters investigating, and that is what they found. Winds at a 35 miles per hour. So 18, PTC 18, a lot of letters there, up to 35 mile per hour sustained winds at this point. So here is that cone. It is expected to strengthen to a category one hurricane by the time it reaches the northern Caribbean and crosses into Cuba during the midweek time frame, and then it will be moving into the southern Gulf of Mexico later this week. But there is a lot of uncertainty with the forecast because it's that time of the year where it's uh, not an exact thing because we've got the stronger wind shear, the drier air that's in play because we're getting into the first week of November. So that kind of makes it more difficult to predict where this system will go exactly, but the cone is taking it into the Gulf of Mexico later this week. So this is something we'll have to pay attention to along the Gulf Coast. PTC 18 as of the three o'clock advisory again sustained winds at 35 miles per hour gusting to 45 moving northeast at seven miles per hour. It's about 350 miles south of Kingston, Jamaica. So this is what we have going into the next several days. It will strengthen to a tropical storm and then eventually to a category one by maybe Wednesday as it crosses the western part of Cuba. And then it will be weakening once it gets into the southern Gulf of Mexico. Exactly where it ends up is it's too soon to know. You know, we're not exactly tracking this system precisely just yet. I think it's still too far out in time to tell you where it will end up in the southern Gulf later this week, but something surely to pay attention to. There's a large spread in the cone of uncertainty later in the week. This is Friday, and then you can see that large spread across the cone. But southeast Louisiana, south Mississippi on the farthest edge of that cone for later in the week and into early this weekend, this upcoming weekend. So we have a lot of things that are working in our favor. Like I mentioned, the drier air, the stronger wind shear that will help to weaken this and cut it down as it gets into the Gulf. So over the next couple days, as it sits in the Caribbean, a little bit more of a favorable environment in the Caribbean. That's why it's able to take off into a tropical storm, into a Cat 1 hurricane on Wednesday, November 6th. Here it goes passing over to Cuba. It's getting directed by this area of high pressure off to the um, northeast. So off the US southeast coast, we've got this ridge of high pressure that's going to help direct PTC 18, which will eventually become a Raphael. Uh, later in this week. So this is what the steering currents have for us, directing it now more towards the northwest into the Gulf by Wednesday and Thursday. But you notice here on our maps that closed circulation becomes less defined. It becomes weaker. So this is all good news. However, we should be planning for more rain along the Gulf Coast. Florida, all of the eastern Gulf Coast, central Gulf Coast will be getting more rain from this system, I think, later in the week, Thursday, Friday into early Saturday. Also, we'll see some breezy conditions as a result of this, especially if it maintains itself as a tropical storm. But it may weaken down even further than that. It's just something we'll have to watch it and take it day by day. But really the good thing to kind of harp on is that it is November. It's not August. It's not September. It's a little bit more of a hostile environment for storms to get you know fired up in the Gulf and to maintain their strength and to strengthen. So things should be weakening later this week. Also, we've got this upper ridge or upper low upper trough upper low pressure will be moving across the country and that will also help to enhance the wind shear. So the upper low and this upper high all kind of working in tandem to see where this will eventually get steered. So it's still a gamble. Where will it go more to the northwest, more directly north, more to the northeast. We'll be watching closely for the upper steering currents in the coming days. Again, the upper high off to the east and then the upper low coming in a strong upper low that'll cut across the country later in the week. So something we'll certainly be watching. I think here at home in the New Orleans area, southeast Louisiana and south Mississippi, we will probably get, you know, some more tropical moisture Thursday, Friday, especially and into Saturday, which will bump up our rain chances. Not a bad thing. We certainly do need some rain. 
And as we get into Saturday of next week, there's that upper low that's going to cut across the country and that will again enhance the wind shear. And then I think by Saturday, this is already not really an issue. Not that it's going to be a big, big problem anyway. Really, the things that I keep noting is this enhanced wind shear. The wind shear, of course, we always talk about how it helps destroy a storm. It helps to cut it, cut it down to size, helps to eliminate its, uh, its ability to really take off and, and strengthen. So the upper wind shear is certainly our friend this week. That's what we'll be watching closely. How much can it destroy this system? And it looks like it will. It will cut it down and make it, you know, and prevent it from taking off later this week. So we got the wind shear. Good news with that. Also, there's a lot of dry air in the Gulf of Mexico now. Not so much in the Caribbean. That's why it's able to, you know, strengthen, get itself together early this week. It will likely be a cat one as it moves across western Cuba midweek. But here's all that dry air in the Gulf of Mexico. That's another thing that helps to inhibit and weaken a system. So that is another thing working in our favor. We've got the dry air, we've got the wind shear. What else could you ask for? I know, unfortunately, we have to deal with this, and it's already November. And we, we don't typically, you know, it's possible that we get this, but it's not always that we have to track systems in November. So unfortunately, this is what we're dealt with. But I think what we have coming our way is something we can certainly handle because of all these factors lining up just right for us to, to handle this. If it was a couple months ago, maybe a different story for sure. So we've got, you know, some tropical moisture coming into the Gulf Coast. This is Thursday into Friday, and then that's what we have. Higher rain chances across the Gulf Coast states into the southeast later into the week and into the weekend. Sure, we'll get some, you know, some rough seas out there, some higher seas for sure. Small craft advisories I'm sure will be going up this week. We'll get some rough seas across the Gulf coast some breezy conditions and really just more rain I think for Thursday Friday especially and then into Saturday for the Gulf Coast again the next name on the list is Raphael that's what it will be named probably tomorrow in the Caribbean again it's not expected to get into the Gulf until Wednesday and then once it does it will be weakening down into a tropical storm and possibly even lower than that Stay tuned. Of course, things can change, but this is what we know now, and it's not something to panic about, you know, completely. Certainly something to keep an eye on, but nothing to, you know, lose your cool about. We'll just be watching this, taking it day by day, and we'll bring you the latest. I want to talk about more specifically in southeast Louisiana and south Mississippi. It was breezy today. We're going to keep this breezy pattern tomorrow into early Tuesday. We'll see those southeast winds courtesy of this high pressure that's off to the east. We've got this tightening pressure gradient gradient as low pressure starts to move across the country. Also, we've got the low pressure developing to our south. So that leads us to some stronger winds early in the week. We'll see sustained winds up to maybe 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll get those gusts above 20 miles per hour in a few spots today, later on this evening, and then really tomorrow into early Tuesday. So this is what we have. Also want to take it later in the week as we get into Friday as PTC 18 who knows what it will be by Friday? Could it be, you know, just a messy area of tropical moisture? We'll see. But by Thursday and Friday, I wanted to show you the winds at this point. So our wind direction will change as that system gets closer to us. We'll see northeast winds around 10 to 15 miles per hour. So it will be breezy, I think, getting into later Thursday, Friday and into early Saturday as a result of this system. I don't think we're going to see anything jumping off the charts, but plan for more rain later in the week here at home some breezy conditions, some small craft advisories. Plus, we already have a coastal flood advisory in effect. It started yesterday, so we have this coastal flood advisory that's with us until Tuesday morning because we're continuing to see those east southeast winds today, tomorrow into early Tuesday. So plan for more minor coastal flooding of one to two feet above normal dry ground. So especially during the high tide, we'll see that minor coastal flooding for the entire area, it's this, these highlighted, this, these boxes highlighted in green rather. So basically all of our uh, coastal spots, all of our shorelines for our lakes and in the Gulf, this is what we have, coastal flood advisory. And again, those high tides will be happening late at night between 10 p.m. and 2, 3 a.m. So late night, early morning is when we'll hit those high tides getting into the next couple of days. So this is what we have over the next week. More rain, breezy weather as a result of this tropical system coming up getting into you know the late week time frame Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Here is that seven day rainfall forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. Heaviest of the rain still looks to be placed off for Florida and Georgia, South Carolina, so Eastern Gulf. 
plus in the Gulf of Mexico itself. But even for our area, we'll probably get up to maybe a half an inch plus of rain, maybe a half an inch up to one inch of rain over the next week. Certainly something we could benefit from. And I think, you know, we'll have multiple chances of rain, not only from more tropical moisture later in the week, but on Tuesday, which is Election Day, we actually have a front coming in from the west, not going to make it here, but the front will be close enough that will trigger off a few scattered showers and storms here for us on Tuesday. So as for Monday tomorrow, not much rain, maybe an isolated shower. Tuesday, a couple scattered showers and storms as a result of the front. Wednesday, not much happening. And then later in the week, those rain chances do go up because of PTC 18, that incoming tropical system that is likely going to bring us a big swath of tropical moisture. But I don't think it's going to be a big organized threat because we have those, you know, limiting factors in play right now, which is really fantastic news. But make sure you definitely stay tuned. We will be watching this. Certainly something to, you know, not turn our back on. We'll just keep you abreast of the situation as we go throughout the next couple of days. Here's our seven day. It's going to be warm. It is going to be humid. It's going to feel like summer over the next week, and we'll definitely need to break out some rain gear for voting day on Tuesday, election day. When you hit the polls, maybe bring a poncho or an umbrella just in case not going to be a washout. And then again, watching the tropics for later in the week for that higher rain chance for us here at home. I'm thinking especially Friday, but that can still change a bit, maybe leaning towards Thursday or into early Saturday. We'll just keep high rain chances to cap off the work week into early next weekend. So thanks for tuning in. We will have much more for you at the WWL Louisiana News at 530. This has been a severe weather alert from WWL Weather, sponsored by Egan Insurance Agency.